is the way. Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. We are ever getting closer to Halloween and I thought why not keep up the festive builds. I've been watching a lot of SKS Props builds where he is using those carvable foam pumpkins from the home improvement store and I thought why not try and make something with that. So. I went and bought one, set it down next to my fireplace in my man cave, and it was sitting next to a Mandalorian style helmet, and it just kind of clicked. Why not make a Mando Lantern or Jacko Lorian? So today we are going to turn a pumpkin into a Mandalorian themed helmet. Fingers crossed. Let's get to build. I bought this Star Wars Black Series Bo-Katan Cries Mandalorian helmet a while back when it was first released and it's been sitting in my man cave for quite a while now. When I decided to grab one of those pumpkins Steve had been talking about, I plopped it down right next to this helmet. Eventually trying to think of what Halloween themed build I could come up with, the two were literally staring me in the face. So this legendary Mandalorian's helmet will be my inspiration for my pumpkin version. I heat up the blade on on my wood burner, put on a respirator, crack open a window, and carve off the bottom of the pumpkin to start. I grab a piece of poster board, fold it in half, and then draw out my basic concept for the visor area. bo theme for her helmet is a night owl, hence the beak-shaped dip in the middle. I'm going to use a jack-o'-lantern as my theme for obvious reasons, so here I am attempting to mimic the reference with a little classic jagged jack teeth. I have an idea to mimic the paint job that should end up looking pretty cool later. Once I cut it out, I taped it onto the pumpkin, traced it, and then cut it out. I wasn't a fan of the burning foam, so I switched over to just a sharp hobby knife, and it made quick work of it with a little hand strength. Work slow with the cutting, as it's a bit awkward of an angle to be cutting at. My video sped up to five times the normal speed, typically, so it looks like I'm going fast, but I'm, I'm really not. I made several passes with each line to cut fully through this half-inch foam layer. I drew up a quick, simplified version of the design for the ear cap to just four simple pieces. I cut the main column and the bottom detail out of 10 millimeter foam and the top layer out of some six millimeter EVA. All the parts get contact cemented together and rounded over on all the edges with the sanding drum, then a stone bit to smooth it out. To glue the foam to the pumpkin, I used super glue.
I cut out a groove on the right side of the ear cap for the rangefinder stock to go into. I am a hoarder of random bits and bobs and my stock is actually a leftover piece of a metal backsplash tile for the kitchen. What's weird about this piece is I've never had this kind of tile in my house and I have no clue how it got into my collection of hoarding materials. To hold the stock in I drilled a hole into it and the pumpkin then screwed it in through the inside. Once the stock was in, I needed to add the rangefinder reticle. I cut out the front of mine from the pumpkin bottom I cut out earlier. Then looking at my reference, I pieced together random bits of 10 millimeter foam to make it look like the other parts. I super glued it all together, sanded it, and then super glued the assembly onto the stock. The bo helmet has a nice owl detail painted on. I thought it would be fun to make mine with a little bit of texture of some wart-like bumps that pumpkins can get. These wart structures on actual pumpkins can come from a variety of reasons. Some being just the variety of pumpkin, edema, viral issues, changes in sugar content, and several other things that I found in a Google search. Mine are going to be added on top with some clay foam. You wet the surface of where you want the foam to stick to, then you just start pushing the material onto it. I get the basic outline I wanted, dabbed it with a sponge to remove my fingerprints and add a little texture, then started rolling balls up and sticking them all over randomly. I used various clay sculpting tools and blended everything together. Once done, I let it sit for a day to dry up the clay foam.
Now on to the paint job. The pumpkin is made out of what looks like styrofoam with a skin over the top. Spray paint typically eats through styrofoam, so I didn't want to do that to my pumpkin. Instead, I chose to just hand paint everything with acrylic paints. I mixed up a close color match as I could by eye and then spread it across the surface. Once it dried, I dabbed on some lighter shades of orange with a sponge to vary the skin color just a little bit to make it a little more realistic. This acrylic paint goes over the clay and EVA foam without a primer or Plasti Dip. I know you were expecting to hear me say two coats of it, but uh, sorry, not for this one. My warts are going to be various shades of green and yellow. To make it a little more sporadic, I use the sponge once again. I pull the paint into the middle of my plate here and then try to loosely mix the colors so that I get little dabs of various shades all over the place. This will mimic the multicolored paint scheme of most Mandalorian helmets and hopefully help my jack-o'-lantern motif stand out a little bit more. I also warded up a strip across the back for an extra detail and cut out whole vents like a typical Mandalorian helmet has. To make the ribs of the pumpkin a little better, I put a mix of 50% Windex and 50% black acrylic paint into my air airbrush and lightly hit them to add contrast. While the all-in-one airbrushes with compressors built onto them are not necessarily the best airbrushes, they make up for it in convenience. Just go slow and pull back a slight stream to gain confidence. Once you get the hang of it, then you can pull the handle back and lay on some paint. If you mess up, you can always just wipe it off while it's still wet and try again. While all the styrofoam is sealed up with paint now at this point, I hit all of the surface with a nice glossy clear coat. Now it is time to add the visor. Instead of using an acrylic visor like I have with several helmets I built like this in the past, I decided to just use some sheer black material. This is an old black shawl my wife was getting rid of, and of course I added it to my hoarding pile to then use for exactly this purpose, or what I was guessing was for this kind of stuff. I use my cutouts to make a quick frame to hold the material taut. This also makes it easy to glue it to the inside of my helmet with the hot glue. I did one for the visor on the front and also a rectangular one for the back to cover the vent holes.
and we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool. Definitely a interesting spin on a Mandalorian style helmet. Uh, I really like how the warty texture turned out using that foam clay over the top. Gives it a nice effect, not only to make it look like the jack-o'-lantern on the front, but also tie in with like the Mandalorian style and dual paint job. Uh, but I think it, I think it's a pretty awesome build. I wasn't quite sure about the visor area, but after asking my wife, uh, she told me I needed it. So I put it on there and I, I really like how it looks. You could obviously use a uh, face replace the face shield replacements that you can buy. Uh, I didn't have one that was black. I did have a green one that might have worked just as well, but I, I kind of like how this looks, especially the covering on the back there area too. But yeah. Maybe we'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to turn a carvable foam jack-o'-lantern into a helmet that you could then wear proudly. Tis. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you put this one on. My head's kind of big and it doesn't really fit me exactly the best, but uh, go ahead and slide this on. You are the scariest jack-o'-lantern around. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.